Well, I want to start with where we are. But tell me about Scarlet. So this is Scarlet Lounge uh, on Amsterdam Avenue between 82nd and 83rd, and it's uh, really my wife Victoria Imperial. It's her creation. She built it, designed it, and um, it's an intimate cocktail lounge with really creative alcoholic and non-alcoholic cocktails, as well as some really great, delicious snacks. It's it's not a full menu sit-down right. restaurant, but it's a cocktail lounge with some, you know, some good snacks. What made you both want to do this? I mean, it just, it feels like, I feel like it's just such a real New York place, you know? It just, yeah. you just it feels like a different, you walk in off the street and it ha you have a different vibe here. It's the kind of place you can dress up for mm -hmm. or you can dress down for. And a lot of our, our customers are neighborhood. Right. It's both a neighborhood place and a destination place. It kind of does both. And there's not a place like this, especially in this neighborhood. Mm -mm. Um, it's pretty unique. I don't think people realize New York has its pockets. You know, you're not living here, you don't realize it has its pockets of neighborhoods and you, you know, oh, yeah. this, it really does and it makes it special. Yeah, and we we moved to this neighborhood um, a couple of years ago. We, were, we always lived downtown for mm -hmm. the most part and we really fell in love with it. So it's kind of nice to uh, be part of it and not just living here, but also yeah. you know, having a place to share with uh, with the neighborhood. I mean, she's just so talented by everything that's here, including finding a way to add a stage and kind of, you know, adding, adding a taste of you into all of this. Theatricality, yeah. yeah. You know, she uh, she's like, we're gonna have a stage, you know, when she was building this, because it was gut renovation. I'm like, a stage? Where? <laughs> I didn't even know you were gonna be able to put a bar in here, you know, let alone a stage. She goes, no, we're gonna have a little stage. And I was like, okay, and there it is. We just got the piano in right. um, this week. We'll have live performances starting this month. That's great. It's so exciting. All right, so let's talk about you because you have a lot of different performances coming up. Uh, one in particular that you're gonna be able to walk to now that you're living in this uh, area. Talk a little bit about Broadway. So An Enemy of the People opens March 18th. I started out in theater in New York, both as a producer and as an actor. You know, I started producing theater in my early 20s and off, off Broadway and uh, worked a lot as an actor off Broadway, off, off Broadway, never did a Broadway show came close, it almost happened a couple of times, right. never happened. And, you know, so now it's like 36 years of- It's time. Of working. And then, you know, and I, when, we lived in California for a few years from mm -hmm. 2012 to about 2019. When I, we moved back, I said, I re, you know, I told my agents I really want to do some plays. This one came my way and it was just like, wow, because it's one of my favorite plays. Mm -hmm. And then, Jeremy Strong from Succession, who's just amazing. And I was like, it couldn't have been a better opportunity. And Amy Herzog doing the adaptation. So uh, I was just thrilled to jump into it. And um, Circle in the Square, you know, that's a theater that actors love. Yes. Al Pacino's done a ton there. George C. Scott played there. I mean, it's just Malkovich. It's very intimate. It's kind of like a little arena almost, because the stage is on the bottom and the seats are up. So it, there's a real, I went there um, before, you know, rehearsal or anything. I went in just to be alone there. Mm -hmm. I asked them to let me in and just just to hear my voice in the oh, room. Wow. And it was really cool imagining people in there. It's, it's it's just a thrill. Did you do things like that to just um, feel the space because it's so important? There's something very um, inspiring about being in an empty theater that has a, his a, a tradition and history of such great actors. Jeremy Strong, have you worked with Jeremy before? No, we've never worked together. You got HBO history. We have HBO history. We we finally met at the you know press conference when we announced this, uh, but I'm you know a big admirer of his work. I think it's a a really tremendous role for him personally as an actor. I think it's he's uh, he will be brilliant in this, and um, uh, it's it's a thrill. Yeah. When you talk about it's been you know thirty plus years, and I just think of you know what, where we've seen you, and then where we've seen you recently with with White Lotus, but you know obviously Sopranos is just you know, the 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 HBO history. What has it been like when you look at that? I mean, that, you you have had the roles of what, what anybody that would say I want to go to New York and be an actor, and you know, and and, and you've done that and now you know bring, bringing it back around to to theater where you really started it all. I mean, it's very hard to have a long career in this business, yeah. let alone a career where you're getting, you know, quality 
material and you know quality projects. Uh, so I, I feel incredibly fortunate, really. When I first started studying acting when I was 17 at Strasbourg, um, you know, I tried to see whatever plays or second act mm -hmm. plays or do whatever you can, you know, when you didn't have any money. Malkovich directed Arms and the Man mm -hmm. at Circle in the Square. Oh, wow. Which I went to see, I mean, I don't know, I think I was 18. And I remember getting there early uh, as, during previews because I knew he would be there right. as their director because I was a huge fan of his and went and got his autograph as he came into the theater. Oh, wow, what a full circle <laughs> I mean, no, no pun intended yeah. full circle moment. That's yeah. really so, cool. Um, that place has a, a particular yeah. significance. And that those first couple of years when I was studying, you know, Pacino did American Buffalo mm -hmm. at the booth which I went to see, which was right around when Scarface came out. Oh gosh, so you were. <laughs> so like you're talking 83, 84, um, and I was studying at Strasbourg, and uh, I remember seeing that play, and I, that just mm -hmm. blew the doors sure. open. Malkovich again did Death of a Salesman like a year later with Dustin Hoffman. Yes, I remember that. So those, you know, what being impact, a kid, though, those yeah, like... being a teenager who's studying, <laughs> wants to be an actor, like, I mean, if you want to be an actor and you see those things, it's you're, you're sold by yeah, then. Those so. live in your soul forever. So in, for me, in a way, it's like almost a return to that wonderment of, you know, New York theater and the, that magic. Mm -hmm.